Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Pigskin Addicts, back again with another video. So today's video, uh, I'm gonna be covering uh, one of the uh, many offensive coordinator candidates that's out there. Um, we've heard his name, we've heard his name linked to uh, the Charger job. Um, you know, we've heard his name linked to other uh, jobs uh, as well too. Um, and I think before I really get into Mike LaFleur, uh, I think it's very important to understand that the Chargers are going to have their work cut out for them uh, as far as hiring the best uh, offensive coordinator that's out there. Um, as it currently stands right now, there's 10 offensive coordinator openings in the NFL. So pretty much a third of the league is looking for offensive coordinators. So uh, the competition is going to be out there. And, you know, I think when you look at this from a surface level, right? There's a lot of people, and me included, right? I was somebody who said, oh, you know, this is Justin Herbert, right? This is obviously going to be easy, right? Picking the, the, the best offensive uh, coordinator candidate out there. But as you really uh, dive into this situation, um, it's not as easy as it looks on the surface. And uh, that's something I'm going to get into right now. So whoever the new offensive coordinator uh, ends up being, uh, they are, wherever they end up living, right? Obviously in Orange County, that's where the Chargers are uh, stationed at. Uh, they're going to be renting. They're not going to be buying anything. And the reason why is that this could end up being a one-year deal, right? This could end up being a one-year opportunity for whoever it is. Uh, Brandon Staley, you know, no matter what Tom Telesco uh, said at his press conference yesterday, um, there really is no guarantees that Brandon Staley is going to be back beyond 2023. Uh, the Chargers are going to have to do something. Uh, there's not going to be any, you know, room for error as far as, records go as far as win loss record goes uh the spanos family is spending a lot of money this payroll uh is chocked full of guys who are getting paid um near the top of the market at their position so you have to do something right a, a, another playoff loss or not getting to the playoffs is not going to cut it so you know depending on who this coordinator is right th they're gonna have to realize that this could be a one-year deal and i think that you know just that initially really drops the, uh, the the charger offensive coordinator job. It drops it down several notches. Yes, you get to work with Justin Herbert, but if you only get to work for him, you know, for a year and, you know, you're looking for another job in a year's time, uh, how valuable really is that, right? So it, it's not going to be as um, glossy eyed and it's not going to be as sweet of a job as we all think it is. Uh, and I think that's something important to get into before you get into any of these offensive uh, coordinator candidates. So now for, for uh, Mike LaFleur, um, obviously the younger brother of uh, Matt LaFleur, head coach of the uh, Green Bay Packers. Um, these guys uh, in particular, right, the LaFleur brothers, Mike, they, uh, they, they're they really, really, really versed in Kyle Shanahan's offense, right? And, uh, you know, Kyle Shanahan's offense is just an offshoot of his father's offense. Uh, you know, most football fans know this now, but they're well versed in it. And uh, I think, you know, him being a potential candidate for the Chargers, you know, he would automatically bring another style of offense, right? Um, we have been so uh, used to the Joe Lombardi offense, right, which obviously didn't make any sense. Um, you know, it, it was bad. It was bad. And, you know, a lot of us seen that even in 2021 when the Chargers finished top five. But, you know, a lot of it was based off of Justin Herbert doing, you know, heroic things to win games, right? And we know that that doesn't work. It's not going to work for the long term. The Chargers know it as well, too. So I think – LaFleur, right? If you just bring in the system, if you just look at the system that he would bring in, obviously would be a huge upgrade over Joe Lombardi. Um, and, you know, I think that's that's not even, a, you know, something to argue about. That's pretty much almost facts, right? If you look at it from that standpoint. Uh, now, the thing that I want to get into with, with Mike LaFleur, though, um, I don't think that he is the best candidate for this job. Um, again, I, I, I think the system is fine. I, I like the system. I really do. A lot of creativity. But when you look at Mike LaFleur, is he going to solve the offensive issues that the Chargers currently have, right? And just when you look at his uh, two years uh, with the New York Jets, uh, my guess is probably a no. So in two years uh, with the uh, New York Jets as the offensive coordinator, uh, Mike LaFleur had in 2021 the 27th ranked uh, run game, and this is in yards, yards per game, 27th ranked, uh, averaging 98 yards a game. And uh, just as past season 2022, they had the 26th run game and uh, averaging 99 yards a game. So 
when you look at the issues the Chargers have on offense, the Chargers rank 30th in uh, run game, right? So they need a offensive coordinator who knows how to develop a very, very, very potent run game. And just looking at this to me, Mike LaFleur is not that guy. Now, you know, a lot of people can say, you know, oh, the Jets didn't have the best roster, right? Which is 100% true. They didn't have the best roster. Uh, obviously, they had quarterback issues. Just when you're looking at it from that standpoint, right? The Jets did not do enough on the ground. Uh, they have a really young team. They have a really young quarterback, right? Obviously, we don't know if he can even play in the league yet. So that tells me, you know that you must develop a run game, right? A run game, a potent run game is going to be the best, the absolute best medicine for a young quarterback, right? It will kind of mask some of the young quarterbacks, uh, you know, blunders, right? As far as decision making, maybe Zach Wilson doesn't understand the offense. There's a whole bunch of things that could have happened in New York, right? But a lot of those problems could have been solved with a really, really good run game, right? And I'm not talking about just a run game that gets you, you know, a little, little bit here and there. I'm talking about a really, really good run game. And if you do not develop that, and if you don't develop it up front, then you're going to struggle when you don't have the most talented team. And that, to me, is the most important thing an offensive coordinator can bring to L.A., is a run game. Um, I really don't care what the other stats look like with, with uh, uh, Michael LaFleur. I really don't care. It doesn't matter because Justin Herbert is top three talent in this league. He is going to throw for yards. He's going to throw for touchdowns. It doesn't matter what offense you put him in. That's not the thing that I'm worried about. That's that you know It really shouldn't be the thing that anybody's worried about. As long as the offensive line protects him, he's going to throw and he's going to get his stats. The passing game is... Nothing that I'm worried about. I, I know with Joe Lombardi uh, departing, the stick routes, all that, you know, nonsense is going to go. And whoever else comes in, obviously they're going to be, you know, taking more shots down. But that's not worried. I'm really not worried about that at all. It is the run game, though. It's the run game. Not being able to seal games. And that's what we've seen this past Saturday night, right? The Chargers go up by 27 points. They have a 20-point lead at halftime. You should be running the ball. You should be salting the clock. You should be taking time off the clock, being able to get first downs, right? Being able to run the ball and be physical and pretty much play keep away. But the Chargers were not able to do that, right? They only called, I believe, five. It was five total runs, I believe, in the, the second half for the Chargers. That's not good. That's not good, and that's not going, uh, you know, to end up nice, right? It doesn't matter how good you are offensively. If you can't run the ball in those type of situations, you're going to lose. You're going to lose games. You're going to allow comebacks. And, uh, you know, even in a game that's not a blowout, right, if you just can't keep the ball away from another team, if you can't keep the ball away from a Mahomes, if you can't keep the ball away from a Burrow, if you can't keep the ball away from these type of guys, those are games that you're going to lose. And I think the Chargers, they've seen enough, right? These past two seasons, the run game has been below average. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I think some moves need to be made personnel-wise. I think uh, running back is something that sh they should, uh, uh, you know, address in the draft. Um, I, not necessarily towards the top of the draft, but they need to address it somehow. And I think a running game would take a lot of pressure off of Justin Herbert's shoulders. And I think it would also help the defense as well, too. The longer you keep your offense out on the field means the less exposure your defense has, right? Your defense can go out, do whatever they do in a limited amount of time and have your offense control the clock. Justin Herbert, the, the, the passing game, it's not going to be an issue, right? We see most of these guys are going to probably going to come back. Um, I don't see any like big, you know, major departures, right? Maybe, uh, you know, Gerald Everett goes somewhere else. But Mike, I think Mike and Keenan are probably both going to be back. Uh, we'll see what happens with Jalen Guyton. Obviously, Josh Palmer is going to be back. Most of these guys are going to be back. The majority of the pass catchers are going to be back on this team. So the chemistry is going to be there. They just have to. Work out the little kinks, right, in, 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 in the details as far as a new system goes. But the chemistry is already there in the passing game. One of the best passing games in the league by far, right? So we know that we know what the Chargers can do. We know that that is their strength on offense. Now it's about building up your weaknesses. And if you build up your weakness, right, to where it's not a weakness anymore, then this team becomes dangerous next year. But they can't do that unless they run the ball. And that should be... The key this offseason, doing whatever they can do to run the ball. And I think if you're going to bring in a coordinator, you have to bring in a coordinator who has 
developed run games in places that he's been, uh, you know, it's, it's just not good enough right now. It's just not good enough. Michael, Mike LaFleur, I think he has a bright future, uh, but I just don't think that he is the right guy for the Chargers right now. I think there has to be a veteran presence uh, calling plays. I think it has to be somebody who, again, has had success and who knows what to do in certain situations, right? Situational football, that's something I talked about throughout the season as well, too. It's got to be somebody who knows what they're doing. So, again, I, I, I like Mike LaFleur. Um, I think he's got a bright future, but I, I just don't think he's the right guy for this job. But, you know, with all of the openings that are out there in the NFL right now, he will get a job somewhere else. Uh, but I just don't think it's right for the Chargers. I don't think he's the right guy. Um, but I will be going over some more, some more candidates as the um, – Week goes on, or you know, possibly next week as well. Too, uh, I think it's important to uh, the Chargers. They only have a small pool of candidates. Um, they are not going to be able to get any of the real hot shot coordinators. Um, teams are going to block it, right? And apparently, the NFL has the rule where you know, if you are an offensive coordinator, you can only go and uh, interview for you know a higher job, right? Which means a, a, a head coaching job. If you're an offensive coordinator, if not, then a team can block it. If you go uh, try to you know do a lateral move, then a the team will block uh, that interview, and it won't happen. Um, and I think it's a good rule. Um, it obviously doesn't benefit us in this uh, aspect, but it's a good rule from you know having teams poach all of the coaching talent out there and having owners who would pay, you know, like a Jerry Jones would, would pay, you know, the best coordinator in the league. He would pay him like a head coach, right? So it prevents that kind of stuff from happening. So the Chargers, they have a limited pool to choose from. And, uh, you know, I think they have to make a good hire. They have to take their time and not rush anything. Uh, but, again, I, I don't think Mike LaFleur is, is the guy for this job at this point right now. But that is all I got for this one, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. Shout out to my new subscribers. I uh, really appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow with more content. And uh, until next time.